One. So let's call the meeting to order. Um, as far as roll call is concerned, we're all here except for Deb. She's she's homesick tonight. So um, let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, there are changes to the agenda. You want to go through those? Yes, just a couple. Um, <coughs> Tim Bly is unable to attend tonight, uh, so you could take that off agenda item 10A. Uh, could you please add a donation under recognition and good things happening? So 7D, um, recognizing our staff and community for donating over $3,000 to a family. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit too about E, the Evans family and their, the great job they've been doing with our concession stand here in the school district. Uh, also add under 8, F9, if you could add Lorraine Prindle, sixth grade teacher at a point eight FTE for school year 21-22. Okay. Any other changes? I would like to add uh, a discussion on the school's COVID plan. Okay. Probably put that on 9F. Okay, mm -hmm. anything else? I'd like to pull off uh, under 8F number, number, number 7. Uh, I'd like to vote on that separately, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good idea, Ken. Okay. Anything else? Where do you want to put that at? Oh, Lindsay. Um, yeah. Why don't we just put it on... Uh, right under the oh. COVID plan. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. MBFG. Okay. All right, anything else? Okay, is there a motion to uh, approve those changes to the agenda? Anyone? I'll make a motion to approve the changes to the agenda. Thanks, Pat. Is there a second? Second. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Now we need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make the motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Next guest. Oh, uh, any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Was there any type of public input? Uh, there was not. No. Okay. All right, we need to recognize some of the good things happening here in school. Now you guys uh, uh, shout out if I forget anything, okay? So we want to welcome Dean Schumann. He's our new student representative, so welcome. Glad to have you. Um, high school personal finance course uh, courses change lives with benefits ranging from higher credit scores and decreased use of predatory lenders to larger retirement account balances and a greater accumulation of wealth during students' lifetimes. Only 1,500 schools nationwide have put in the work to guarantee all students are getting those benefits right now. Congratulations to Leroy Ostrander High School and teacher Carrie Olson for the NGPF Gold Standard Schools National Recognition. We are very proud of you, so that's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, congratula congratulations to our fall athletes and artists. We want to wish you guys the best of luck as you head into the postseason play. Um, we want to thank our 
teaching staff and community for the uh, $3,000 so far raised for the uh, Magnus Rudlong family. Um, that uh, soup um, supper before the football game, that was awesome and I think well attended. So thank you to those, those folks who put that on. Um, and we also like to thank uh, Ryan and Diana Evans for the awesome job that they do with the concession stands for football and volleyball. So we appreciate that very much. Thank you very much. Is there anything else that I've missed? I'm sure there's a lot of other things, but <laughs> we'll just highlight those for tonight. Um, moving on to the consent agenda. Um, any questions or corrections to the minutes from last uh, last month's meeting? Either one of the meet two meetings last month? Okay, treasurer's reports. Uh, is there anything we need to add there? Um, we had one void this month. Um, check 58040 was voided out due to change in officials. And I talked to Jen earlier about this. Um, I'm pulling the CLA bill. Uh, if you guys look at the charges so far um, for the month of July and the month of August, the bill is already $22,200 um, If the number stays last year, which is 70000 is the budget, we are already way close to going to be going over this year. So <clears throat> I think we need to decide what the best course of action is going forward because... Have we even seen a contract from CLA No. Yet? I thought no. when we first did that that it was capped at 70, that mm -hmm. they couldn't charge us over 70 for the year. Is Correct. That still the way that is? Right. We did not change anything within the contract. What they were going to do was decrease the amount of time spent uh, with us, like Christy in this case. Oh, okay. To keep Correct. us down to that level. And, I mean, <clears throat> based on last year's, you always have a little bit more because, I mean, we had a personnel changeover. And, you know, we had to do with the audit. But even for the month of July, the bill was just under $12,000. And they actually gave us a discount of eighteen seventy-five. dollars There's actually a discount for about both months about just over $4,000. So if the full amount had been there, we'd have been over $26,000 for two months, and our budget is 70000 Does it explain in the invoice why it's been, been billed so high? It doesn't. Um, it lists, like, um, the hours for the July was 105.75, and it gives the bill, and there's some expenses and technology fee, and then... Um, August, we had Sarah for part of the month, and Christy was here the rest of the month. But, like I said, they do give us a bit of a discount. The discount for July was eighteen seventy-five. The discount for um, August was, you know, twenty-two hundred. So, still seems pretty high, in my opinion. So, like I said, I mean, we had the audit, yeah. so you're going to have a little more with that. And we did have a personnel change, but even the month of August alone was 10302 Yeah, I know. <coughs> Do you know offhand how that compares to those two months last year? Because it's still been the audit, everything would have been the same. If I remember right, we never saw a CLA bill more than 4500 I mean, every month we ranged between three and 4000 That was even, I think the only month that we were a little bit higher was the June, it would have been last June, because we had a lot of issues that we were finding from the previous business manager that we need to have, like the taxes weren't paid. Mm -hmm. So that one was a little higher because we had Sarah come in and help fix some of those things and fill out some paperwork and stuff. But otherwise, we have never had bills this high at all. So we must... I mean, I don't remember, but we must have approved continuing our relationship with them at some point. We did. We approved in June to continue with them with the contract forthcoming. Okay. But we Which don't have a contract. We haven't seen yet. We so have seen maybe we should just put that on the agenda for next, <coughs> mm -hmm. next month. Mm -hmm. and I'll reach out to And have a discussion about that. And hopefully we'll have 
a contract in hand by then. Okay. And maybe we need to meet with uh, Linda with her again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right now I have pulled it. It's up to the board if we want to send the check right away or do we want to wait and get this figured out before? I would recommend pulling it. Yeah. And wait until next month. We a long discussion about wait. this. So. Okay. So I will I send an that. email to TIFF and let her know that that one needs to be taken out of the bills that will go out. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, moving down to the donations. Ducks Unlimited donated $175 to uh, the Yellow Trap team, so we appreciate that. The Leroy and Ostrander Lions Club donated $1,000 to the elementary snack cart, so mm -hmm. sounds like the elementary will be snacking up a storm. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank goodness. laughs> All right. Personnel issues. Um, approve the hiring of uh, Angela Emerson as yearbook advisor. Uh, Roger Bacon, junior high basketball coach. Nicole Hansen, junior high girls basketball coach. Haley Hunkerholt, JV girls basketball coach. Corey Ronnenberg, varsity girls basketball coach. Ryan Evans as a varsity boys basketball <coughs> coach. And a, uh, approval of food service worker <coughs> job description. Okay. If anybody's got any questions, any of those, just Shout out, okay? One, we one added more. Lorraine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we've got the sixth grade teacher, Lorraine Prindle, for uh, point eight for this year. Okay. Any questions on any of any items on the consent agenda? Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make the motion to approve the consent agenda. Thanks, Teresa. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Tim. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, moving down to discussion and action items. Uh, can I just make a quick pause? Absolutely. Where, can I ask where we moved Lindsay to? We moved Maybe her to that. nine. G. G. Oh, 9G. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I went to the other G. There's too many Gs, right? There, there is right now. Okay, so um, we've got the second reading of uh, policy 410, family and medical leave policy. Uh, 413, harassment and violence. 414, mandated reporting of child neglect or physical or sexual abuse. Um, 415, mandated reporting of maltreatment of vulnerable adults. Those are all second reading. Is there anything that the policy committee needs to add, fill us in on for the second reading on those policies? No, we didn't have any changes. Okay. All right, would someone like to make a motion to approve the second reading of those four policies? I'll make a motion to approve the second reading of policy 410, 413, 414, and 415. Okay, thanks, Pat. Is there a second to that? Second. Thanks, Teresa. Any questions, discussion? <coughs> okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, uh, first reading of a parent consent transportation form. <coughs> Distance learning policy, uh, policy 416, drug and alcohol testing, and 416 form. What does that mean? Basically, it's a form that goes with whenever <coughs> we would test, test okay. anybody we have documentation to prove. Okay. Um, 417, chemical use and abuse. 418, uh, drug-free workplace and drug-free school policy. Uh, 419, tobacco-free environment, possession and use of tobacco, tobacco-related devices, and electronic delivery devices, vaping awareness and prevention instruction. So first reading of those uh, policies. Anything to report on that from the policy committee? Um, the only changes we had were on the parental um, consent transportation form. 
Mm -hmm. um, we need to add an administrative signature so the kids have something to turn to the coach that it was approved by administration. And we were also going to add something about, you know, you have to have 24 hours notice unless there's extenuating circumstances so that way the coaches aren't being bombarded at the end of the day with, hey, I'm riding home with my parents, that it gives, there's some time in between there. Okay. Any questions on any of those? We've all had those to read, so. Okay. If not, is there a motion to approve the first reading of those policies? I'll make the motion to approve the first reading of the parent consent transportation form, the distance learning policy, policy 416, 417, 418, and 419. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Tim. Uh, any questions, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carried. All right. Uh, just a revisit of the discussion of our financial practices as far as paying bills and so forth. So I think, Teresa, you have yeah. something to share there. There was some miscommunication last month on how the procedures would be going forward. So we need to be a little more clear on how we want to do this and set the guidelines, actually, you know, set them in stone of what we would like to see done as a board. So um, I emailed this off to Jen earlier and Dave. So what I'm proposing is that, and like I said, then we'd have this all written down, um, the regular bills such as the credit card, um, our Amazon account, utilities, the fuel bills, those have already been paid in between board bills as hand pays anyways. And I mean, honestly, who's going to pull the Minnesota energy bill and ask questions? It's whatever the meter says. Um, so I propose that we continue to pay those as hand pays. Um, the local bills, I'd like to request those be paid as due. They're usually under $500 anyways. They're small amounts. It's usually something for the lumber yard or the hardware store. Um, that the referees be paid in between the board bills. Um, the refs already sign off that they've received their checks. Everyone has been. Same thing with workers. They sign off that they have been at the game. Um, we've been getting, Jen and I have been getting weekly reports that shows the hand pays that I'm going out between. So far, that's worked really well. If there's any questions, it's just a quick email to get back what we need. Um, I would like to see all others held until the board unless they will be paid late and then go ahead and send them out. And it's as simple as an email being sent that, hey, guys, we've got a $5,000 bill here. The mail was late. It's due in three days. Can I send this? Jen can approve it. If for some reason they can't get a hold of Jen, I've approved stuff like that before that we can get it out the door. But having something set in some type of guidelines or something written down might help with the communication breakdown we had after last month's meeting. I would assume most of the bills are 30 day terms anyway. <coughs> a lot of them are, yes. And I would hope that the mail isn't that late, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Well, oh. uh, <coughs> wants to chime in. Oh. Christy, go ahead. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, so the one thing, too, that we need to worry about, I'm not quite sure if my video is popping up or not because it's a black screen to me, but is we ran into an issue this last month with workers' compensation. If that gets turned in late in any way, shape, or form, they cancel our policy immediately. Like, there is no, like, you get a five-day grace. It's done. And so, although I like Teresa's process, um, I, I kind of had a different thought in mind, so I'll let you guys chew on it. But it was that invoices get entered all week. All checks get cut on Friday that after the checks are cut, a report is sent to the treasurer and the superintendent to be approved by Monday morning. Any check not to be sent will be pulled from the mailing and then checks will get pulled on Monday. So it's not necessarily a different process for different bills. It's the same process for every bill regardless of the type of bill. So it doesn't get confused or lost in translation. I guess for me, the only concern is that I'm only one person and Jen's only another person looking at this. So, say the CLA bill, say, you know, I thought it was okay, Jen thought it was okay, but Cassidy's got a question. That bill's already out the door and it's gone. 
Should we put a threshold on how much? That's a possibility too, a money threshold. You could, you could add the work and workman's comp or whatever. To the Correct. US you know too. those, like you know the say the insurance has to be paid every month. Then you know by a certain date, then you'd put that one on there. That's okay to be paid. My only concern, like I said, is that if we have a bill that, say, Chad has a question about, if it's from two weeks ago, he's not seeing it till two weeks later. He doesn't have the time to ask that question because that check's already been and gone. So there's no point of even asking. It's gone. Okay, I was just trying to have a process that was standard for all checks, but um, right. if, this, if Teresa's process works for you guys, that's fine. Yeah. But definitely please make sure that the insurance and the workers' comps, because those are the bigger ones, because we've already received a notice of cancellation of workers' compensation because of the fact that, A, we got the bill late, and then, B, it, 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 the mail is being ridiculously slow at this point in time, and it's a little nerve-wracking from that perspective of when we're trying to make sure that the bills get paid, we don't want to run into a situation where it was a while back where bills just weren't getting paid. So, yeah. And we all have to deal with the mail problem. Correct. You know, so, so Teresa and I and Jen had a discussion uh, one day. There was some confusion within the office. One of the things that concerned me is that we have a treasurer now who has, is a stay-at-home mom. She probably has more time to come in and those things than maybe someone that could possibly end up with that position in the future that works at Mayo or whatever and is not here to be doing that. So we tried to figure out a process so that um, Teresa, in this case, doesn't have to be coming into the school all the time. Correct. And I, I think her suggestion I think is a good one um, and I mean if it's not we can always you know let's give it a try for a few months if it doesn't work we can look right. at what specific parts aren't working and go from right. there you don't have to be married to it that's right are there any other areas of high priority that we need to be concerned about as far as like workman's comp or areas that we need to be cognizant of trying to get those bills paid immediately that you can think of so I know that's a big one of work must comp and I, I don't know maybe other insurance like a lot of some of those go out through wire too yeah so the I mean so the board doesn't see those on board bills anyways those go through the monthly wires mm -hmm. um, and, and like I said if there's something that pops up that say the mail is two weeks late and we have to cut it immediately and get it out the door if Jen's here Jen can approve it if it's got to go out now and they can't get a hold of Jen they can call me they can call Dave we can just say you know what go ahead and send it well, I think we gave them a threshold of like what twenty thousand or something to twenty five. Yeah. When so I think that's with perfectly within that realm for her Should to prove that. So I mean, issues anyway. obviously she's really yep. good about communicating with us what it's for. So Correct. I think that's fine. Right. Yep. Okay. So we probably should uh, have a motion if we're gonna want if we want to go with Teresa's proposal. Can you kind of go over that again? Yep. Let me find my email. And you guys, I can. she'll read it tonight, but I can also send it out. I'll yep. cut and paste it, Teresa, just from your email. Um, all regular bills, the credit card, Amazon's, utility fuel, now including insurance and workman's comp, um, those will be continued to be paid as hand pays during the meeting. Um, local bills can be paid when they are due. It's definitely where zip code, like I said, they're usually under $500. Um, same thing, the referees can be paid in between because they change every game. Um, Jen and I will continue to see the weekly reports of the hand pays in between. And then we are going to hold all others unless they are going to be late, with the exception of, say, a bill arrives late and we have to send it out in between, then it can just be approved to go out. And then I'll add to to the bullet point the workman's comp immediate pay too. Yes, so we have that down too. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to that effect, or <laughs> make a motion for some other? That's what she said. I'll make a motion to approve that. Teresa's <laughs> <laughs> verbiage on that. To approve that. We won't, we won't make you repeat it word for word. <laughs> I can't. My I can't remember. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Thanks, Cassidy. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> I guess we, I guess I would like to see a, maybe a review or a report back in a few months of how that's working. Okay. Um, all right, uh, discussion of the non-affiliated handbook. We've made it, folks. We've made it. So a huge thank you to Deb and Tim um, for helping out with this and, and being so supportive and coming in for meetings and listening to my rants and <laughs> having just really quality discussions of what's needed for our non-affiliated staff. Um, so all of you have, have received a copy of the new handbook. Uh, wages and Benefits Handbook. I was going to meet with that group today, but we've had quite a few staff members absent. Uh, so I thought it'd be best just to meet with them individually, and I'll be sending an email out to talk about that. Uh, but a few highlights of this. Uh, salaries have now been identified and increased uh, per cost of living ranges. Benefits for specific job classifications have also been identified and created. And some of those include sick leave, bereavement leave, retirement, expense reimbursement, uh, you know, emergency leave, things like that that just weren't identified before. Um, you know, to just to continue to support our staff and continue to retain staff and then also recruit staff, we need documents like this. Uh, we really do, and it's it's only right, it's only fair, it's only ethical to do that. Um, so it was a really great process, a tedious process, but a really great process to work with Tim and Deb and figure this out. We may have tweaks along the way because it is the first round of a handbook. Uh, so don't be surprised if I come next one month because I saw something different or maybe the committee met and we find something that we want to change. Um, but we will definitely let all of you know and we'll also let the non-affiliated staff know um, if changes occur. So they'll be getting the handbook here this week. I'll be sending it out to all of them uh, as soon as, well, hopefully this week, I'll get it out to them. But any questions, I'll open it up to the group if there's any questions about this. Doesn't look like it. Right. So this will be a two-year handbook. Um, so we will revisit it in about another year, actually. Uh, keep in mind too, the board did approve retro pay for um, back to July 1. So now that we approved this handbook tonight, that retro pay will go back to July 1 starting. Christy will, Christy knows all this is coming, but um, she'll be working on that then for the next payroll. Okay. Any questions, comments, discussion? Are we going to do this as like a first reading or just approve it? I think just approve it. Okay. Yep. So I know I'm, I'm looking at it and there's a couple of positions that I'm kind of curious about because I know um, as far as like, especially for the pool, um, I'm not really, uh, I know there's a little bit of area where we have an assistant uh, teacher position like te that teaches like the classes and stuff that gets a little bit more. So I don't know if we need to get put that in this handbook or not. So that would be like a community education worker or a pool adult pool a, worker. Adult pool worker. Yep. So that's on your last page. We did put that in there. Okay. So that's I, I shouldn't. I'll number the pages before I hand it out. It's down towards <laughs> the bottom, Cass. Right here. Yeah. Okay. So, for the sake of, because like, I know what she's getting paid, would that decrease her pay then down to this amount? Because I don't, we need to keep that in cognizant too as well. Then you add her years of service. So this yeah. is the base pay here. Okay, so no and one's then, losing pay. That's just no, the no, main no. thing. No, 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 absolutely okay. not. I nope. just want to make sure <laughs> that that's that has the case been, and that's clear. Yes, no, let me, let me say this and be very strict with this, that there has been such an immense amount of, I guess, differences in pay um, throughout all of these people's salaries and all these people's paychecks and years of service 
yeah. what we're trying to do is clean it all up and get it down to where it is. Um, kind of go, we had to do some research way back in history of where things started and where these kind of starting pay scales were. And then that's why we built the number of years of service for us to give them almost loyalty pay. So that's what you take. You take the base pay, yeah. then years of service and add that up yeah. to get to where people should be. Yeah. So that was mine. I just noticed something. So the Cardinal Kids, Cardinal AIDS adult is 13. The pool worker adults only 10, 25. Community ed adults 12. Is there a reason why they're all so different and not the same across? That is a great question I wish I could answer. We, okay. we <laughs> asked that in our meeting that just looking back historically, okay. we have no idea where a lot of these numbers came from. Okay. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, so we didn't want, we can't change history. Yep. So we just took it and used it okay. to, oh, possibly the public might know. Carrie, go. Uh, Cardinal Kids at one point got, they got funding, additional funding for their workers. So that's okay. why theirs was, but I, I think since then it's gone away. But Could be. When I was okay. doing Cardinal Kids, they did get additional funding for okay. their workers. Good to know. Okay. Good to know. Well, I appreciate the work you guys put in to make that happen. It was, <coughs> it was needed. I think Much so. Much needed. I also yeah. think there needs to be, for the sake of transparency, what the pool manager gets as well on this sheet. We, we changed that to pool supervisor, okay. the name, um, just to make it consistent with what, it was basically two out of three said supervisor. <laughs> and so decided to say, hey, it should be supervisor. Okay. And things like that we can surely change throughout the life of this handbook for sure. Names. So mm -hmm. for example, I just changed the food service director title to director, thinking that is a better title than a food service, can't remember what it was mm -hmm. called, but it just made sense because that's also what some state narratives send us. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? Discussion? Okay. If not, is there a motion to approve the, uh, the handbook? Non-affiliated handbook. You'll, you'll probably come up with a nicer name than not. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion to approve the non-affiliated handbook. Okay. Thanks, Pat. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Tim. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. Motion carried. Okay, uh, discussion of a band purchase. Okay, so. Oh, Dave, oh. you skipped football. Oh, I'm sorry. I just oh. checked that off. <laughs> sorry. Discussion of the junior high football co cooperation with Kingsland. What's All right. What's the latest on that? So, Aaron and I will tag team on this one. A uh, couple things. So, after our last board meeting, we were asked to. Uh, do a little bit more research, dig a little deeper, and basically reach out to parents and ask them kind of their feelings on what a cooperative may look like to them, if they like it or not. Uh, sure enough, uh, AD Carrier reached out to all the junior high parents. At the time of my mailing to all of you last week, six out of eight parents did respond to him with a vote yes, essentially informal vote yes to cooperate with Kingsland in junior high football for 2023, uh, or 22, I'm sorry. Um, since then, the other parent has responded and said yes. Uh, just There's just a couple kind of questions still lingering out there that we want to make one of the maybe conflicts the parents are seeing is that we don't want a lopsided cooperative that maybe you have seen in the past here. Um, but we have 
really resounded to the fact, both Aaron and I and uh, AD Carrier, that we are going to make sure it's a very fair cooperative. Um, we surely aren't going to be the bully and expect everything our way. Instead, it's going to be very fair, um, as fair as we can make it. Um, also, there's maybe some hesitancy in terms of um, maybe on Kingsland side, uh, in terms of you know staffing and 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 things like that. And so we're going to be you know reaching out to their new AD. Uh, they do have a new interim AD, and and see how we can make things work with that as well. Uh, so we're going to do everything we can to make this right for our kids and create an opportunity um, instead of not having one at all. Uh, but we're going to make it so it is right, it is ethical. We'll do everything we can to support you know, all the kids, whether it's a Kingsland child or a Leroy Ostrander <coughs> child, we'll do everything we can. And we want to be involved and meet regularly and talking about it too. It's not just going to be like, hey, let's sign this document and have a cooperation. It's going to be regular discussions. We have to do that for the sake of a brand new cooperative. Anything else, Aaron, with that? No, n not really. We just made sure we talked about, <clears throat> you know, Trevor and I have talked a lot about the, and, and you know, the spring, the way the spring co-ops are set up, and we know there's some uh, improvements in that area, but, you know, we talked about to make sure equal amount of games at both places, equal amount of practice times in both places, um, equal amount of coaches from both schools. Everything we want to make sure things is equal, it's an equal sharing, and it's, you know, we don't need to worry about changing the name because the junior high doesn't need a mascot. You know, what we did, you know, can you get a cheap white jersey and put red and black numbers can you get it and then you know then you get a whatever dark get a black one and put red numbers on it or red and put black whatever so I think we can get away pretty cheap I don't think we need to worry about um, equipment last night we played Kingsland they had gray helmets and black helmets both we have white helmets so in junior high level I mean we're not gonna need to break the bank on making sure we have the same you know color helmets you know probably it's a nice same color jersey would be a nice idea um, <laughs> but I think it was pretty um, expensive. <coughs> so just the, the fairness, really making it a, a sharing opportunity and to provide an opportunity for kids. So, um, and like I said, it's, it's a year trial basis. Uh, you know, the numbers just last night, Kingsland had nine kids, we had 10. You know, that was a serious number. So, I mean, it's, it's, that's where we're both at. So if we can, and we've seen it be successful with Mabel and Spring Grove, where they've been able to save their varsities because they co-op at that level. So, Hopefully that would be our goal too, is if that's what we need to do so the kids can play and then we keep our own varsities, that would be a great opportunity. So, Are you thinking that would be a yearly thing? I mean, reviewed yearly, whether or not I, it's needed or not? It sounds like junior high is pretty easy where it can be reviewed yearly if you want to. Really. I'm just, I just asking. Yeah, if you do a good job of keeping track of your numbers, you, sh you know. As, as I mean, we like right see. now, we don't have a lot of boys in those classes mm -hmm. and maybe... Three years from now, we'll have a lot more boys. Who knows? Right. Yeah. right. I, I don't know. Yeah, junior high is not much. It's not because this, the conference just kind of makes their own schedule, so we're not relying on any outside source for the junior high stuff or anything. So, junior high is seventh and eighth. Is there a possibility to co-op with fifth and sixth too? Through, oh, through I mean, it's it's separate yes. Way? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because we have some kids going to Riceville, and some are going to Southland, and some are going here. Is fifth and sixth a possibility, too, to maybe even try it? Let's see why there's not a conversation. Okay. You know, does Kingsland have a fifth and sixth grade program? No, yes. I don't know. Yes. Do they? Do they? Do they? Yeah. And younger. Oh, they even have younger? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what they, they must be I don't know who they play though. <coughs> yeah, I don't know if they, they, they travel. Like the oh, so they travel sure. all over? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So maybe that's a possibility too if we're looking at, you know, the junior high kids. Because when we're looking at the numbers, if we do this, it's probably going to be a couple of years. That, I mean, if you start the kids young enough at fifth and sixth grade, they learn to play together before they hit the junior high program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most of the leagues around here are 11 man for the, for the elementary stuff. And we, we've just never been able to, you know, we've always had Riceville join us to give us the extra numbers. And yeah. then uh, we've been with Riceville. Because they need the extra numbers, but Kingsland is an option. So I think it's a worth a conversation. I don't think it'd be a bad thing to look into. Mm -hmm. yeah. Idea. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think it's great. We need to mm -hmm. we need to be able to offer those opportunities for our kids. 
Any other just comments, questions? Otherwise, uh, we're looking for a motion, I guess, to uh, move ahead with uh, uh, junior high co-op with Kingsland for junior high football. Has Kingsland voted on that yet? They did. They did, and I believe it was the Monday before our Tuesday meeting or something like that. It was just right before our September meeting, and they voted yes. Okay. From, from what I recall, the AD yeah. saying, yeah. is that right? At least there's plenty of time to work out those details too. Oh yeah, you know, yep. so. absolutely. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the Junior High Football Cooperative of Kingsland for the 22-23 school year. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Casty. Thanks, Casty. Thanks, Second. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. All right. Um, now we can move to the van purchase discussion. All right, folks. Um, I'm kind of like a broken record. I keep coming to the board to buy like vehicles from you guys. But keep in mind, this is through our CARES dollar or our ESSER dollars. Um, I was telling Dave earlier today that I did submit our ESSER three grants, uh, and so and and. Chrissy and Aaron reviewed them for me, so thank you guys for that. I know it was a lot, so thank you. Um, but that's that's over that's roughly four hundred and seventy thousand. And in one of the grants, and there is three there, but one of the grants, uh, we can purchase vehicles similar to what we did with our bus. Uh, so this wouldn't be coming out of the general fund. Instead, it would be coming through this fund instead, our federal dollars. And so um, basically, we are in need, folks. We really are. Uh, whether it's for special education transportation, athletic event transportation, whether it's for, you know, um, spacing on buses, if we go down that road with the State Department, socially distancing, whatever it is, we do need one. Um, and what I put in my notes to the school board so the public knows, it's going to be roughly 35000 Now, again, I, I really want to disclaim roughly uh, because we do, you know, get government credit, things like that. We also have a trade-in value of about 3000 to $3,500 on our old van. Um, so, again, give or take, it's probably going to be under that $40,000. Um, but, but we are getting dollars to do just that to do just that so are we talking a minivan or one of the big red vans the big vans the big ones okay. yep 15 passengers i think it's is it 10 i think yeah. it's 10 like the big red ones that we have yeah, those are, those are i 10. believe they're yeah, 10, 10. 10. Yep. yeah so is the other one too high getting to the point where it's the mileage is too high yes. that we can't use it anymore pretty soon yep because there is a mileage limit there is I don't there know what is, that is but yes okay. How is this in contrast with the rest of the buses and vans? Like as far as what's due next? You know what? I'm going to have to resend that to you guys. I cannot recall. Do you remember what month I sent that, sent that to you guys last year? Kind of our, it's almost like our, our rotation yeah. plan. Probably, I'll, I'll resend it to you to right Cass. Before you purchase the, that yep. bus probably. Send, yeah. Let me make a note of that, but I'll get that out to you so then you guys can kind of play around. We have it kind of fresh. That being said, I think we should, I mean, can we table this until next month? Sure. Ooh, I think. <laughs> the reason being is we have to get it ordered and delivered before our December deadline, I believe. Is it the 31st? December yeah. 31st? No, I could be wrong on that. Well, I know. So don't are totally at least trust me on that. Six weeks right now. So oh. yeah. So don't to. totally trust me though. If you're using ESSER money, yep. You, we, if if it's delivered, if it's delivered before December thirty first, we have to have it paid for by December thirty first in order to get reimbursed. There we go. If it's after December thirty first, we have until June thirtieth to pay for it. With reimbursement. With reimbursement, however, in order to buy it, we have to get prior approval from MDE. Right. We cannot purchase it without that prior approval, but um, it sounds like 
you guys did it last time was you brought it to the board, got the approval at the board level, and then went to MDE for approval. Was that in November last year that we approved that? Is that it, right? No, October, yeah. November? It yeah. was so tight, kind of like right now. I remember that. So I know we had to purchase. We had a deadline. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm surfing through old emails here. Yes. Hold on. Cannot remember. You know, it might have been this month last year, Teresa, the October. Okay. There's September. Board meeting. November board meeting. Well, if this is needed, should we go ahead and approve that, and then we can see a, a schedule of... Yeah, well, I, I know there's you know a I mean? need for it, so I think I'm just wondering, making mm -hmm. sure that we stay in line with the rest of the buses, because I know some of them are getting really old. I mean, right, Chad? Yes, they are. I mean, yeah. that's... Yeah. So, so, I I mean... Yeah, yeah. The mileage is an issue. Can it be... So it has to be delivered, or can we have it purchased? I think I it has to be on-site, too. On-site? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so in order to use that as her money, we actually have taken possession of it. Okay. And then as by the end of the year, 31st? Yes, December okay. 31st. Yeah. And a bus is about double that, roughly? Uh, a bus purchase is probably between 90 and 100,000. Oh, sure. Yeah. Last year it seemed like. What's our fleet look like? I mean, what's our. Look like. oh, the was 70 okay. was the part that came out of general fund, oh, or 68 hmm. was out of general fund, and then the other was the ESSER. Okay. So, okay. yep. Set cast, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just wondering what our fleet looks like. I know, I know we need a van, but I also know we need a bus. Mm -hmm. So, is there a mileage limitation on the buses too? Mm -hmm. And actually, if you look at MnDOT, and look, there is a pretty significant document that has awesome pictures of vehicles, school district vehicles, and then the amount of mileage and the threshold, um, just kind of everything in it. Chad, like do you recall the name like of it? Years old and and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of them are so a year. So it's years, years and years mileage. Really yeah, I think it's both. I think it's years yeah. and mileage. Yeah. Yep, but it's right on the MDU website. I just can't recall what link you have to click. But it's a good report. So, I assume you chose the need for the van over the bus for a specific reason, mm -hmm. need. Mm -hmm. So, yep. would yeah. some. I'm still digging and I can't find it. I'll resend it. I can do that tomorrow too. Okay. Well, it's going to have well, to be approved by us, and then goes the MD for approval. I think as we. Well. Yeah, I, I agree. I think regardless, I think the bus is needed, so I'll make the motion to approve the bus purchase or the van purchase. Van purchase. There we go. <laughs> Buses, <laughs> vans, Why whatever, not? They Wait a minute here. whatever they are. <laughs> I could use a new car too. So. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Cass is on a roll. Yeah, that's right. I, I guess. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Cassie. Is there a second to that? <laughs> second. Chad? All right, thanks, Chad. Is there any other discussion? <laughs> okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. That'll keep us posted. All right, yes, expect Which some emails from me. I know you will. <coughs> okay, um, Pat wanted to have some discussion of the COVID plan. So I would like to know. <clears throat> Jan, mm -hmm. what the numbers are in the school. All right. So did some kind of running around today and, and had a lot of support from Nikki helping me find numbers. But our current numbers as of the beginning of October, and I don't have a true date if it's October 1st or 5th, but we'll just say the beginning of October, um, seven adults have either been out with COVID or chose to be out because of COVID related something. And then 11 students is where we're at. Because you, Cardinal Kids, is shut down for a week because of it, right? Um, I would say Cardinal Kids is actually shut down. Yes, we do have COVID there, but we're not shut down because of COVID. It's because of the ratio of adults compared to students. 
because we have adults out sick, we don't have enough adults to cover, and so we do have to shut it down, and that's a state ratio we have to follow. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's somewhat related. Don't get me wrong, but but if we would have had numbers of adults, we could have kept it open. Yeah. So, okay. Yep. I had a person ask if that number, if it was a staff member or a Cardinal Kids member, does that count against our numbers? With those numbers there, or are they completely separate? No, nope, I count them. Okay. Mauer County counts them, MDE counts them. Um, our nurse has to flag them in our CDC system. I believe it's through our CDC system. Maybe it's through MDE. Yeah, the, the, red cap. the red cap or something it's called. And so it's all in one. Because it's one district. And that's if someone chooses to be tested and they test positive and report. To and reports, school. yep. As long as we're reported to, yeah. yep. Yeah, they just wanted to yeah, make sure question. that being that is connected to the school, if those were numbers were looped together. Yeah, that's so. a great question. Yeah, very good. Yep. I mean, it's no surprise we have people that are sick. It is cold and flu season, and our policy says if you're out with cold and flu symptoms. You should stay home. People are choosing to get tested. That's no problem. We're just not requiring that. You know, so. Um, we're able to cover the staff that have been gone. They're not all been gone at the same time, right? And we were, we're, we're able to right. cover everything. Yeah, right on. now has right been, now the, been a little bit, yeah, a little hairier now, but prior to, yeah. Things are working, right, staff members? I'm a little nervous because I was one of those staff people. So I'm a little nervous that if my younger son, who can't stay at home, um, if he would kind of track COVID, um, I'm more I'm nervous about my time my time off. Um, just just running out of time off because I have taken. Five days. Or just running out of your sick leave days. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm, I'm nervous about that. I was very um, nervous about my students. Um, that, that was just a big worry. When, you're, when you know that you are positive, it was, um, I just don't want them to get sick. I don't want my coworkers to get sick. I was just like, um, and I don't mind saying that I had it because that I mean that's the truth. I went up and got tested when when and I waited a while. I was sick and then I thought <coughs> then I got a symptom that I thought well this is for sure. So I got tested and yep I was for sure. I just don't want I know how hard. But it regardless, is you would have stayed home right because you were sick. Yeah, I was. I, I mean was that's sick. the that's the totally that's sick. our policy yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just worry, like I said, yeah. that because of COVID. Um, I mean, normally I would not stay home with a, a cough and a runny nose. Um, I stayed home more, I think, because I tested positive, because I chose to test. So that's where I worry a little bit. Because the testing is not, to me, to me the testing doesn't really help anything much other than for your own personal right. peace of mind right and for because my just be, say you tested negative just because yep. you tested negative but you still had cold and flu symptoms right you should still shouldn't be coming back until you no. don't have those symptoms anymore right. right and my my biggest symptom like now even is that I have a runny nose and I'm not home I'm, I've done my 10 days already at home but like the last few days, last week even, I probably would, I would have came back to school with a runny nose. I mean, I, I have Kleenex, I'm, I'm okay with, it's not. I mean, you could have cold, you could have I, a I don't cold know. symptom for I don't know month. how to explain and how, nice. like I didn't want. Right. Yeah, and I've had allergies. I've been at school with knowing that I have allergies. It is allergy season too. Yeah. And, and I, I've been at school because of that. I just, I don't know, with that, with, with the whole thing, I just, that, that was the biggest concern, I guess, and my mom said too, she's like, you're going to stay home. And I'm like, 
yeah, I'm gonna stay home. But it, but it was a hard, it was a hard decision. Like, should I come back Monday? I'm, I'm feeling better. But then when I lost my sense of taste and smell, then I'm like, okay, I'm, I can't come back and bring these to kids who are vulnerable, who don't have any choice in any matter. So that was just my kind of. And it's gonna, it's gonna go around. Yep. It yep. just, it is. I mean, mm -hmm. college football games filled the capacity. Yep. You know, who's going to want to shut down the country again? No, no, no. And I certainly wouldn't want. It was just or my own personal. I, I think part of it was a personal choice mm -hmm. and how I was feeling. <coughs> how I know. Is I didn't test till like Wednesday. Sure. But I kept. I kept. To me, that's kind of the beauty of what yeah. we what we're trying to do is it's your choice. It's the parents' choice. It's mm -hmm. putting the power back into the parents hands and not putting the power in in our hands or whatever but so, I which I, that's like, what I like about for it. a week it is a lot of pressure on our subs or, or right. like if I'm gone somebody has to be in my room there is no elementary teacher that can cover my fourth grade classroom right. it's a little different with the high school but still it's a big it's a when a high school teacher is gone it's a if Mel, for example, is in my room, they are covering internally, and they're losing <coughs> that time that they would normally take to prepare for their next round of classes to grade things. So everybody's just kind of playing a catch-up game right now, I think, with all the absences that we've I mean, had. It's not, yeah, it's not ideal, that's for sure. No. No. But I think it's, it's, probably better, it's probably better than, than the distance learning, which we, we learned wasn't great right for the kids either so I think we're in a better position than we were with that we just have to make some of the absences because people are sick and I, with so. I think we just have to have a little patience and just have to make it work yeah. Yeah. people are sick they need to stay home and yeah and then come up I, mean, I was caught over and like midterms went out and I, I could just send them home tomorrow when everybody else probably sent them home last week. Yeah. And I haven't had, and I have had zero complaints. I mean, everybody was just like. And that's understandable. Yep, yeah. very, very good, very good group of parents out there. Yeah, obviously I don't think it's going away. I mean, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, it's pretty much proven it's yeah. here. I go it's going to be here. this year, next year, year after, it's here to stay. We have to learn to deal with it. How has it been with covering staff? I know we have Mal internally. Has Trevor, I know Trevor still has a teaching element. I mean, so we have two he internal. Helps out, I help out. We, we've had so far, we've been okay. Just like every other year before COVID. <laughs> I've been okay. in the classrooms. Jen's been in the classrooms. You know, it's just what we do. Yeah, in the past, we've had a lot of people out with the flu before. Exactly. You know, it's happened before. Now they just have a label for it. Right? <laughs> so, okay. I got, uh, I, you know, part of my concern is that there are going to be some parents that in order for them to, if they have a sick child at home and they, they got to take off a day work, you know, there's a fair chance that they're going to send them to school and say they're okay. And I know there's really nothing we can do about that, but I question whether or not the school district needs to um, make the statement that we recommend that you wear a mask probably as much for legalities as anything. Because if we would happen to have, you know, COVID blow up in the school and some people get extremely sick that they might say, well, the school did not. <coughs> Jen, do you, do you have an opinion on that? On the, which part? <laughs> Whether or not we should recommend that they wear a mask. Oh, okay. We not enforce it, you know, still leave it their choice, but we re say that we recommend that you wear one. Gosh, you know, I haven't, What's been nice is I haven't been having to think about it too much. Um, I think it's more for me. 
I, I can I go back to your first statement and then I'll get to your second statement I do have a concern about our families having to take off work that is a big concern of mine and of course our teachers too um, just one it's hard to leave work and then you come back and there's a lot more work for you I understand that but I also understand our community is um, it has a high rate of poverty and and a lot of our jobs that our parents and community members have maybe don't have leave time balances or leave time at all and so that worries me so that yes they will send their sick child to school just so they can work to put food on the table so that makes me a little I think about these things you know it's it's the bleeding heart I'll say that in me for sure but um, so I worry about that I think more than anything else and then it does relate to so then what do we have to do to be um, proactive in, in protecting our kids now at the end of the day I'm going to support the board in whatever you decide all politics out the door no matter what it is I, I can't I can't have my politics at this table at all um, so I'll do whatever the board needs us to do what you deem appropriate and and the best for this community that's why you're elected for these decisions um, currently in Chatfield where my kids go to school it's not a mass mandate and our numbers are very similar in Fillmore and Olmsted County that they are here. And right now it's working actually okay. Initially I was a little concerned with our, as Dave and I have talked, with the initial policy that was presented. But now that I'm in the trenches here, I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm more okay with not necessarily having masks. Definitely support those that do. And, and personally would recommend it especially if you're not feeling well or if you're coughing sneezing have a cold please do that that's the right thing to do for others um, and I'll support that um, but right now I'm feeling a little okay with just because our numbers are explosive right now they're not great I mean yeah we want zero kids out sick zero staff out sick um, <laughs> But, but it's kind of the nature. Are they any right. different than anywhere else? Right. I don't know. Right. Yeah. That's it's a good statement. I'm not sure. So, yeah, I know it's kind of a wishy-washy answer, but it's just me being in the trenches that it's more. Please keep your kids home. COVID, flu, whatever it is. Please. I mean, that's it's just the right thing to do to care about other people. If it is the flu, yes, you can give somebody the flu. You know, or if you're sick or whatever regardless of the title of the illness you could give it to somebody else and so let's let's be kind to one another and and do something to mitigate that does that make sense and i i talked a little bit all over the place i did the same thing with mitchell mitchell developed a little nasty cough had nothing else i kept him home for the week so he was home for 10 days by the time sunday night came he had a cough like once all day so of course you know he hated mom on monday morning because i had made him wear a mask for the next three days but he did it and didn't complain, and it just after three days it was over. But so I kept him home. Of course, like, it's, like Dave said, it's easier for me to be able to do that. But when he came back, I did make him wear a mask. I said, I don't want you coughing on your friends. I don't want you coughing on your teacher. Mm -hmm. And he went along with it just fine. Mm -hmm. So, does this? Is, are there many people that wear a mask? I didn't assume there probably would be. There, there are some. Few, a few. There's not very many, but I don't, I don't think there's I see some. any in the middle of the tree. Um, are you talking adults? Yes. Oh, adults. Or, no, there's, or students. Students. <laughs> there's, 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 there's a handful of adults yeah. and a handful yeah, of students handful that were Let's say about a dozen, a little over a dozen yeah. regularly. I there's elementary students come in my room. That have mass oh, do they? I don't. Yes. Yep. I haven't seen. Yep. I've seen and I've I will seen suggest over. too. We have really become mm -hmm. accustomed to here, and have done a really good job of just, which we probably should have been doing for years, but social distancing. This is the closest I've been at a meeting. Is this meeting right now to somebody? But people tend to kind of really, have really just kept their distance, which we probably should have always done. Just like hand sanitizing stations, probably have always should have done that, you know. And so. We do keep preaching that, you know, hey, quit touching each other, wash your hands, you know, keep your distance from each other. We do that. If you go into the cafeteria during elementary time, you'll see, especially at the younger levels, the teachers really spreading them out when they're in line. 
they have tape on the floor now, so they stop touching each other. So there you go. <laughs> so yeah, so it's just kind of <laughs> you know their 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 quality health practices we should have been doing anyway prior to last year, um, and now we're just kind of getting into the swing of it and best practices of it. Um, you know, again, I, I try to send y'all the Mauer County data every week, and I watch that regularly, and I am, you know, studying it and watching the trends, and yep, there is a spike in trends. We're seeing it, and you guys see it too every week. And so, yeah, this discussion is going to be reoccurring. You know, we can't stop not having these discussions and not being proactive, not, you know, facing what's going on. and. And, uh, and at the end of the day, you know, our priority has to be the safety of our kids. Secondly to, you know, first, second would be academics. You know, but the safety of our kids no matter what it is. Is the custodial so. staff still doing like the daily fogging with the sanitizer gun machine thing that we bought? So our guns are um, broken right now. So Ooh. the company is coming in, I believe, <coughs> when? This week. Tomorrow or next week? No, something this week. Yeah, this week. Okay. I get my weeks mixed up. Um, to, to fix them, and then yes, that'll continue to happen. How long have they been down? Well, beginning of the year, but they've been, we've been using the um, the sprayer. Sprayer. Oh, okay. Instead. It's not the fogger, but we've been using the sprayer with the disinfectant stuff on it. Okay. So. It so just, it's a little it, thicker when it comes out. Yeah, it's not the mist yeah, that the guns it's are. More, more wet and stuff. But okay. we're working on getting those so. taken care of this week. I think there was an article, I don't know if it was Minnesota Family Council or what, but they were talking about West Fargo School District and Fargo School District. Um, one had a mask policy, one didn't. Their COVID numbers as of last month were very similar. So it's kind of, you know, same community. It's kind of interesting to watch some of that stuff to see how it, I mean, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong, just it's kind of interesting to see some of that stuff. It's not making it. Difference. And I think too, you know, we're, we need to, and not that I always support the Minnesota Department of Education, um, but they're not forcing masks on us like they did last year, right? right, right. They have yep. now backed up too, and, and I want to believe the research they're doing and the scientists they talk to and, you know, they're experts up there in, in certain regards. Not all the time, but in certain regards, I'll say it. Um, <laughs> isn't every government agency like that right now? But, but I, I'd like to suggest that we do continue to listen to them. You know, they're recommending them, but they're not directing. And so that gave us a little bit more leeway, like, wait a minute, they kind of know what they're talking about here based off CDC, the feds, you know, all that too. So that's why I'm a little, going back to your question and to answer a little bit more clear, that's why I'm a little bit more like, I'm all right with this now, you know, in terms of the masks. Yep. Just, and also knowing we have a lot of other mitigation strategies going on right now, too. You know, stay home if you're sick. Sanitize, wash your hands, stay distance, you know. Uh, and our buses, we do mandate, well, that is mandated federally that they have yeah. to wear masks <laughs> and we have to socially distance. So there's a lot to it. It's kind of confusing. <laughs> Could be so, right around, but my guess is it'll probably just, it'll probably go in phases, just like... You know, flu, cold, and flu all the time. I think it'll probably do that. But I mean, it's not it's not bad to have this discussion every once in a while. Very so, good. given our policy as it states right now, I think my question would be: Is the district safe if someone were or a student or staff member would contract COVID and heaven forbid pass away from this? Would the district be covered? Is that what you're that's, kind of yeah, where you're coming that's, from? Yeah, so that's how, the question that's I posed to MSBA. Yeah. How would you prove that we were liable, though? I posed that question to MSBA back in August, September. They, the recommendation that came down from Gary Lee was that while they're going to have a tough time proving that the school is the sole cause of this, there was nobody else. That's going to be hard to prove, but they said in the meantime, you could bury yourself in lawyer bills trying to defend yourself. There was three last year. That wouldn't matter what the policy said, right? Correct. They said the word recommend would give you a bills. little bit of coverage. Were you able to talk to Morgan about that? Uh, no, she was out when I called, and then I forgot to call her back. Okay. <laughs> she was out on vacation. I could, so, see, I could I see where vacation. there was a lot Somewhere. of other places 
that were different um, as far as COVID goes, but to try and nail down LO school district is where uh, there like actually is a school on the west coast or sorry the east coast <clears throat> that actually is being sued um a 10 year old MS. girl caught yep. it and they're <coughs> trying to sue the school district yep i just want to make sure that there's things in place just in case it does happen we need to protect Correct. the district because i mean like having some if kind of one of those yeah if one of those were to happen and we get sued and whoever wins could be catastrophic to this district I'd say the only thing we have right now in terms of an insurance policy would be that we have a law firm that we would go to. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's yeah. that's with any any time there's anything related to law or lawsuits, that word or suing, the very first thing I do is immediately contact an attorney and so then it's off the district, you know. Um, so that's what we have. Yeah. You know. It, it wouldn't come down to policy. It surely wouldn't come down to practices. It would come down who has a better lawyer right. and the most money. Yeah. And, and we've been, <laughs> yeah. we've been the only policies. people that win are the lawyers. <laughs> and that's true. We've that's been true. improving policies all year, and we could get sued for any number of things, and it really doesn't matter what the, is written on that piece of paper. It comes down to who's got the best attorney. Mm -hmm. It's sad, but that's the way it is. I guess I would like to, if you'd reach back out to Morgan yes. and see what Morgan says. I mean, yes. if the word recommend is going to help us in any way, say something awful does happen, knock on wood that it doesn't. I mean, recommend isn't, you know, you have to do it. I recommend you go jump off a bridge. Doesn't mean you have to do it. But if that word could somehow, like has to help protect the district, I don't see a downside just adding the word recommend somewhere in there. That's what I was thinking. If we so would then, say recommend, it might remove a little bit of that liability liability on the district. Yep. So what I'll do is, once I reach out to her and talk to her and have a conversation, I'll send the board what she says, and then what we'll do so the community at large is well aware of what we're doing. I'll put it on our November board agenda, calling it school plan. Again, school plan 21-22. Um, so then we're, you know, transparent with the public, too, of what we're doing. Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. Yeah, I love conversations. We want to be this. transparent. And we don't want to be one of those districts that say parents have no input in their kids' education either. Well, Teresa, Aaron, and I were watching the Rochester School Board meeting. Was that recording? <laughs> but anyway, it was, and it was Edit. horrible. I mean, we were like shocked at what we were watching. We were shocked, just extremely disrespectful, um, not engaging in a quality discussion of this sort. This was great. Um, adults are supposed to be doing this. We were honestly, I had to shut it off after a while. So, you know, yeah. I like that we can share our opinions and our viewpoints. And we're all still friends when we walk out the door, so that's the way it should be. Okay. Thanks for that discussion. Um, we'll move on to approve Lindsay Milks as the junior varsity boys basketball coach. Can I get a motion for that? I'll make the motion to approve Lindsay for the JV boys basketball for 21 22 school year. Okay. Thanks, Teresa. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Pat. Any other discussion on that? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, principal's report. All right. Um, well, like you guys just approved we're gonna get a sixth grade teacher which is great um, so that's gonna be good news we also will be hiring another paraprofessional this week because we've had one of those posted so we are getting people to apply now for some positions um, 
which will help out tremendously around the building. So that's going to be awesome. Um, we are still looking for, we still ha we'll have an art position posted. So that's what we're looking for now. Um, staff development day is coming up uh, Monday. Right now we have a two-hour internet safety training set up that we have to do as a staff. Uh, we also have some of the Responsibility Center Discipline training uh, with the entire staff. And then part of the day will also be part of um, uh, licensure training and workshops for the teachers on renewing licensure and stuff like that. So we've got a pretty busy, busy day coming up on Monday, um, so we're, but we should be able to get a lot of things um, knocked out. So that would be a good day for us. Uh, November 11th is already the end of first quarter. Um, Oh, what else we got going on? Um, we did, get, well, we just got another, speaking of positions, Reading Corps, we, we filled that spot, the K3 Reading Corps person. So uh, that person started this week, so they'll be working with K through 3. Um, and we're helping with reading, which is awesome because we've been talking about um, how do we get these kids caught up and help and keep improving our reading with those little guys. So that came at a good time. Um, by getting that position filled. Um, also today we had a presentation by Corey Greenwood. Um, he's a speaker, goes around the country, he's from Grand Meadow area and uh, speaks a lot on, it's the second time we had him, the first time was a lot about his experiences and suicide prevention and then um, the message just is, you know, everyone, you know, everybody's special in their own way, they have, you know, live your life, uh, be kind, um, be courteous of others. It was just a really good message. He brings a band, <coughs> so a lot of lights and music and loud noises, and the kids really like that. So um, hopefully they got the message out of it too, um, but otherwise it was the second time we've had them, so it's been pretty cool. So um, we try to, we're trying to bring people back in now. Since COVID, you know, we couldn't bring anybody in, so now we are bringing in people with, you know, suicide prevention, bullying, and stuff like that. Um, we're starting to bring more presenters and programs and things like that. So getting back to normal almost with some of these things, so that's pretty awesome with what we have going on here. So um, I don't know, it just seems it's just busy. It's just busy around here. So, But it's good, <laughs> good busy, but it's just, like I said, I could go on for a lot of other things. So um, any questions before the last thing? I'm going to go on and talk a little bit about test scores. Any other questions before I kind of... Talk to you a little bit on the test scores. Um, I believe Jen sent these out to everybody. Um, there should be three different, three different things. I kind of broke it down um, to this year or last year's scores. Um, it's hard to continue the comparison when you had a with a year break and then we had scores last year because if you look at um, this sheet. Normally what I do is see how it's broken into how many students were, were exceeds, how many were meets, and so forth. What I normally would do is, so now this year when we retake it, what I'll do is I'll take these numbers here and see what kids moved because I talked to you guys a lot about growth. So we're looking at those, the, the four components here, and we want to move those numbers to exceeds to the left. Um, does everybody follow that? So that's really where we'll check the growth of. So the third grade scores now as fourth graders, I'll see hopefully now, in, for example, in reading for third grade, we had four partials. So hopefully now next year when they get to fourth grade, there will be maybe only two partials. You know, so our goal is to move people up. So this is, the, this is the, where I really start doing some more comparisons, but obviously I didn't have the year prior to this to put out here to compare those. But this is the one, and as you can see, the proficient, not the, we're, we're okay with our testing, but if you look at, if you put together the exceeds meets and then partial, our scores are pretty good. So we have, majority of our kids are, are, getting, are getting it. Um, we don't have a ton of kids that are just not getting there. So um, I wanted to put that on there too because you don't see the kids that are partial, they don't show up. <coughs> when you look at the final um, scores for MCAs. You don't see the partials, which means they got some of it. Um, they didn't get all of it. So it's kind of hard to really put all of it into one component. So does that kind of make sense? What, so you'll, next year when you see this piece, you'll have a second, I'll have two years comparing. 
and where they moved to. Does that make sense? So that'll show us how what kind of growth we had. So that'll be a better better idea of if we're doing the right thing in, in the curriculum. Make sense? So what are the other tests that you were talking about? Fast bridge. Fast bridge. Yes. Yeah. So we take so are those. Are you tracking those? Yeah, we take those three times a year, and those are on a computer program here at school. I could print out. You can track those I could, and I could, see the yeah, improvement I throughout stuff. the year. Yeah. So we do one in the fall, then winter, and spring. So we use that too. Um, and then this I've been keeping since I've been here. Um, this is just a, a, the graph of every class that's gone through. Um, after 2012, that black line, that sort of, used to be AYP and it used to be one test, and then they changed the test in 2013. So that's why that's there, and then it changed to more of the MMR and all these different things. So, um, And then 2020, obviously, we didn't take a test. So you can kind of see following a class through of if there was any improvements um, or growth or anything like that. Um, but then, you know, you got a couple of years where you get up in the high school, you don't take... Like math, for example, you take it in eighth grade and then you don't take it again until your junior year. So that's yeah, a big jump there to get. So I just do that for my own to look at that just to kind of keep an idea. I like breaking it down with the Excel sheet a little bit better. And this just for, this was a, the, <coughs> this one is I just the first one I made, just the initial reaction of looking district-wide, not breaking really down other than just our district scores combined. Um, you know, if you look at the math, um, you know, I kind of compared us to the state where, you know, in 2017 and 19, we were increasing. We were, we were going the right way before COVID hit. Same thing with um, reading. We were going the right direction. We were increasing, and then COVID hit. And then as you look at our science, our science looks pretty good because, um, you know, we were actually decreasing before COVID, and we're actually increasing now once COVID hit and we're going the other direction. So that was, I guess, our, um, we're doing something right on the science part. Of, we, we have a, a science teacher that's focused and doing a lot of things with the lab and really um, has a great knowledge of the science and it can tell and just those testing pieces. So um, I know that's just a lot of information, information thrown at you guys. Um, any questions on any of this? Um, so teachers use this information plus the fast bridge stuff, and then they kind of see where they should be hitting based on their scores. You know, and every month I send you a little kind of paragraph on, on kind of our curriculum because it's based off our mission statement of, I believe it's under review, revise, and implement our current curriculum review process. The data that Aaron is retrieving from our teaching staff and our students, this is used to determine what curriculum will fit best in their toolboxes, um, mm -hmm. in the teacher's toolboxes. Like, oh, look at the strand data in terms of statistics or algebra. You know, hey, we are really missing the boat here, so let's dig deeper. Oh, wait a minute, we didn't even cover this in our current algebra textbook. We need to start reviewing our curriculum and maybe supplementing or getting something new. So this data is a lot more comprehensive than just, hey, this is what the students know on that given day. It's also what, what is the district doing to support our teachers in the classrooms in terms of the tools they use to, to teach and instruct. Is there a way with FASPERS to kind of see, I don't, I've never seen a FASPERS report. I mean, because I know we got some red areas in here, but I mean, COVID was through everybody for a loop. Is there something that, you know, you can see like the beginning of the year, like here's where FASPERS, because they get tested, is it three times a year for FASPERS? Three. Mm -hmm. Is there some, kind of like the same thing here that we see, like this is where they started at. Now this is where they are in the middle of the year. Now this is the class as a group. Is there something that FASPERS does kind of like that or no? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. I think we'd have to wait till the, till the winter test so we have two scores. That's what I'm wondering. If we can't say, like, you know, here's our beginning of the year, here's our base. And Probably. then you show us something like, here's where we are at the middle of the year, here's where we end it. Because, like you said, MCAs, I don't know. But, I mean, fast bridges watch your kids go through the year. Yeah. So is there something we could see? That's more it's valuable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. See yeah. kind of where we are trending through the year. Yep. I can. It's a better tool for our I teachers. Can, I can do something in the winter when we're done, bring it to you guys okay. and show you. But 
Yeah, and just kind of so you guys are aware, some of the um, the student service center up there has is, is, is been doing, is for me, has, has opened up a lot of opportunities for me to get in the classrooms. Like I was telling Jen today, it's middle of October, and this is the first time in 14 years I have been in every classroom. I've done a, a walk-through report in every single classroom this year on every single teacher, and it's October. Um, I can honestly say I've never had an opportunity to do that. So um, I got everyone done pre-K through 12th grade uh, with a walk-through. That doesn't count um, visits when I just walk in and I don't write anything down. Um, so I've been in everybody's rooms at least two to three times this year. Um, so it's awesome for me because as a building principal and being able to do <laughs> curriculum and instruction, now I can start helping the teachers because after um, MEA, I start my first round of evaluations um, on the, this year's third of the teachers that have evals. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna do evals on a third of them, but I'm gonna be in everybody's classroom, which I've not ever done before just because of I've not been able to have enough time to do that. So hopefully we should see some improvements with figuring out if there's any issues with grade books or curriculum or test scores because now I can really do focus on my main job of the instructional leader in curriculum, which um, to nobody's fault, but unfortunately with the other responsibilities, it's just, it's been hard to do over the years. So mm -hmm. um, no excuses now, we should see nothing but improvements. We should see everything getting better as long as cross our fingers, we can, the COVID leaves us alone and lets us <laughs> stay in school. Um, but I'm excited to be in the classrooms. I'm excited to help our teachers get better. Um, we can always improve. I can improve. Teachers can improve. Um, so that's what we're looking for. And where can we do it and, and use this data for, for guidance? But uh, I'm pretty excited after being able to get in the classrooms and, and observe and meet with the teachers and talk to them and start talking more about standards and all those things. So just so you guys know, that's kind of what's happening with, um, you know, a lot of those small things have taken off my plate so I can be in the classroom with the teachers where I should be. So, And hopefully the teachers aren't, they like that. They're like, hey, wait a minute. No. But no, I think they appreciate it too. As long as you don't come in and startle me. <laughs> no, so like I said, things have just been going going really well. The, the student service center up there, they're, they're starting with the attendance and the grade checks and the college and career readiness and all of these things that we kind of did is just getting so much more in depth. We're hitting more students, we're providing more opportunities, and not only for the students, but now the teachers get more opportunities because they get more of me now for that stuff too. So it's just, it's pretty awesome. So just thank you for giving us the opportunity to add that upstairs. Um, hopefully we see a continued improvement in all areas, so. And we'll be coming with data. What Aaron, just kind of piggybacking off your last sentence there, the student services team, we're going to provide you all with data around the February time frame to tell you exactly what he's talking about, what their duties have been, the impact of those duties on kids. We could probably do some sort of, you know, survey or a deep dive data um, for all of this stuff. And then, and also to piggyback off what Aaron is saying too, every time I am in this district, two or three times a week, he sits in my office and talks about teachers and instruction. And that's exactly what your principal should be doing. 90% of his job should be surrounded on student achievement. It really should be. And that the majority of the time it should be about teachers. Um, they are providing that and he needs to have that opportunity to do that. So I, I agree with him 100%. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity and giving us the opportunity to prove to you that it's going to work. We're going to prove it to you hopefully by February. So. Was there a good turnout for that uh, college FAFSA last Tuesday? I think there was at 630. It's next. Or is it, is next. it next? It's, it's coming next. Coming up. Yep. It's well, next I, I Tuesday. It <laughs> wasn't very good. I've seen it on Facebook. I thought it was last Tuesday. So. No, and it's actually a bad night because that's the first round of football playoffs. Um, <laughs> So we might have to change it. <laughs> you know, they do They we do it know. for free for us. Usually you get, each school usually gets a handful of parents. Now is that just, like, is that an online thing or is that something our student student service rep is going to be presenting on? Or no, we, we've, um, the financial lady uh, from Riverland has always done it for the last eight years maybe. Um, and she rotates between Southland, Grand Meadow, and us. Okay. Um, it just so happens this year it's in our building. Um, 
but the three schools will come here. But like I said, they, she puts together a nice PowerPoint. Basically, it's just introducing the parents to what FAFSA is, how to get to the website, um, and a little bit of some tricks of the trade of how to get through it. Um, and then she has a PowerPoint for them if she wants. So, okay. Um, it's not the end of the world if you can't make it. It's just sometimes people get nervous when it's, you know, especially the first you know, one. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you gotta do three at one time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is the same. It's three times. No, so yeah. Okay. But unfortunately, trying to find time because once October hit, you can start and you gotta get it done. And, yeah. But it's actually not terrible. It's just more intimidating than anything. Yeah. Of it looks like a lot, but it's, it's, it's not fun. I can tell you that. But, uh, <laughs> oh, true. <dear. laughs> right, so, but I think that's it's a great asset to have. Yeah. You know, yeah. Students to kind of have a foot ahead. Yeah. Uh, versus not. So. I that's like right. That. I like that offering. Yeah. No, we did. Oh, we we did do. I forgot. We did. Our sixth graders went on a canoe mobile trip over in Mauer County. They went to the. Oh, what did they do? What lake? I can't remember what lake it was, but we've been doing. We've been getting out. Just speaking of more things we're doing, of field trips and stuff. So our sixth graders got out, and we're looking to go on for career fairs or college fairs and just stuff like that. So we're, mm -hmm. like I said, starting to get all these things back going that we um, used to have, but it's just a slow process. But we're getting there. So I think that's about all I got. Any questions? <laughs> that's good. Thanks, Aaron. Yep. Okay, Jen, is there anything left for you to say? <laughs> Not a lot, but I'm going to continue to introduce our student representative. Dayden, will you stand up for us, please? <laughs> I'm going to put you in the hot seat like I did our last student rep. But thank you. Congratulations and welcome. Um, Dane, tell us a little bit about yourself, will you? Well, I'm Dane. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Tell us about like your activities, kind of a rundown of your resume. Uh, football, basketball, track shooting, student council, FFA, I'm officers on both rows, secretary. Yep. 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 What is your favorite class in school? I like great outdoors. It's gym. Good one. Good one. What's your least favorite class? <gasps> <laughs> Yes, it would be. It would be. <laughs> good, good. What do you feel like you want to do in terms of representing the student body when you're here every month? Um, just to let you know, know what students think, and not so much of a golf <coughs> standpoint, more of a student standpoint too. I think that's awesome. That's good. Yeah. Congratulations. We're so happy you're going to be part of this. So, yeah, Dane will be here every meeting. Dane, starting in November, we start putting you officially on the board agenda. And so you'll have a spot every month where you can preach to the board. Not to us, of course, Mr. Hungerholt and I, but you can preach to the members of the board, okay? <coughs> kind of tell them what to do. Sound good? <laughs> unless good. You, unless you come and want to cancel advanced math. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that might be something different. For the record, we are doing pumpkin chucking in advanced math. Ooh. <laughs> Dean, might, Dean might have a pop quiz that day. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, I'll go through mine really quick. A uh, quick reminder to our community that our Truth in Taxation meeting will be at the December school board meeting, and that starts at 6.01 p.m. Excuse me, I'm going to cough here. <coughs> uh, the audit will be presented at our November school board meeting. Also in November, it's election day, and so if there are any elections going on across the state, of course, we have to follow state statute that in a school district, um, all activities cannot be held between 6 and 8 p.m., so we got to be cognizant of that. Uh, we will have a yearly, our yearly mock OSHA will be coming up in late October, early November, so kind of look for more details on that as we go, including lead and water testing issues, asbestos issues, things like that. Also, our building and ground committee members are all going to be a part of that as well, those discussions. 
Uh, business manager Millering and I will be starting to work on the 22-23 school district budget. Uh, so we like to work on those a little bit earlier than maybe most superintendents and business managers, but we always want to keep a pulse on what we're doing. But then also be a little bit more formalized in terms of futuristic thinking. What are we going to do in five years from now and ten years from now? We want to think like that. So more to come on that. Um, also, just to keep the board in the loop that I am continuing to reach out to third-party cleaners. I've received feedback from four of the seven places I've called. So at the November meeting or probably before that, you'll get information from me, but I can present to all of you on um, dollars and days, duties, things like that that comes with those third-party cleaners for the district. Um, as many of you have heard, a new fob, a key fob entrance is coming to our Cardinal Kids Cardinal Care area. Um, we think that's going to be a little bit more safe um, for our parents and students in that part of the building. So we're excited about that. I uh, want to reiterate what um, Chairman Lunning said related to our student artists and athletes. Again, coming off a pretty difficult year last year, they showed such resiliency and strength. And now coming into this new year with some restrictions, I tell you what, they're just outstanding. Um, they're fun to hear about and watch and um, pretty proud of them, that's for sure. Uh, and then finally, a huge shout out to um, Mrs. Saylor's class, um, her 6th through 12th grade cards class. They sell coffee and tea and hot chocolates throughout the week to our staff and student body. Um, all of you can purchase a, a coffee ticket too if you'd like to. They're pretty cheap. And quite frankly, not only is the, the product exceptional, but the service is exceptional as well. So huge shout out to them. and. Um, I highly recommend you purchase purchase something from them. So I'll end on that note tonight. Okay. Any questions for Jen? Okay, thank you. All right, are there any school board committee reports? Um, we got the monthly email from Dan for SMEC. Um, SMEC ALC currently has 58 students with several on the waiting list and they are at capacity. Um, the level four program has 10 kids and that is full along with most of the level threes. And SMEC and the member districts have seen an increase in the number of students on IEPs. Right now there are 616 kids um, that went up last year with COVID. And then um, ECFE October 28th is the Halloween party. And then regular ECFE classes will start in November. else anyone has okay um, I think Jen kind of went through the, uh, the district calendar there um, anything else anyone uh, has before we adjourn if not is there a motion to adjourn the meeting make a motion to adjourn the meeting thanks Tim is there a second Thanks, uh, Chad. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you all.